Street, March 20th, 1991, interviewing Vonnie Weaver, a longtime resident of Newton Corner. How many, what year did you come to live in Newton Corner? 1964 in the autumn. Yeah, and you moved away and... Uh, when was, let's see, man, uh, seven years later. Seven years later? Say, say, 64 and seven is 71. 71. Yes. Now, uh, coming here to work in mm -hmm. recent years, do you see that Newton Corner has changed much? Uh, Parts of it, not much at all. Other parts, there's some been some building. You know, we moved in after the pike was cut through. That was the major change. Once in a while, we could run into people who uh, remembered the fight, mm -hmm. even remembered who was mayor. At and of course, the, yeah, he couldn't go on being mayor not if he let the pike through. Now, that further corner on the other side where the movie theater was, do you remember that? In oh, sure. Spring? We went to the Paramount. And, and my that husband whole block and that business block, was that? Uh, across the street, my husband ran a store for a while called the Music Corner, right across from George's Bar. Good grief. That's where the uh, big hotel is now. No. No. Across Galen Street, not across Washington Street. Okay. And um, Galen Street goes up to Watertown. Right, right. Well, I think it might be. It's still called Center Street for a few blocks. Right, right, Because it's right, still right, Newton. Right. Yeah. Now, what made, did he take over an existing music store or oh, he started one? No, he started one. And it was, uh, I think in five years, he very nearly broke even. It mm -hmm. was a dreadful corner to try to pull business in. And because he finally of gave up parking. no parking. But and uh, it was pretty seedy neighborhood too. Uh, George's Bar was not to be entered. I, I would never set foot in George's Bar. It was out. You might want to delete this. It was outside of George's Bar that you would see the Newton Corner drugs line up every fall, waiting to be picked up, yeah. and then they'd reappear in the spring. Then they spent the winter in the warmth of the jail, as far as we knew. It's well. That's what we heard. Exactly. This, this now aspect of Newton Corner is entirely gone with the current not empty building. Not, well, of Newton Corner in, in that area. But when you come back across the pike and go up Center Street to Mount Ida, which is a tiny little spurt off to your right and up a little hill at the end of Mount Ida, where it abuts on, where it dead ends on Newtonville Avenue, is a huge frame house where all these guys seem to live now. And you see them coming down with their little knit hats right, from this right. house. I've and somebody it. worked on the house recently, cleaned up the front porch even. It's interesting how a crossroads will always have, you know, extremely mm -hmm. interesting people that may not be considered mainstream. Do you remember some, uh, what type of music did your husband sell? Anytime anybody he wanted. He's <laughs> the emphasis was on popular? No, the emphasis in the music corner was on selling instruments and instrumental lessons. So he was also at the time off and on teaching at the Berkeley College of Music. Mm -hmm. And so we had some absolutely wonderful teachers, many of whom our kids will never forget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People who are still gigging around town. Ron Murray plays the guitar and he books now. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Reed Jorgensen, a drummer who is still, uh, I often hear of Reed playing somewhere. Uh, now, I can't they, remember everybody's name. Yeah, no, they gave uh, the lessons on the premises. Oh, the yes. Oh, yes, students. but they were, they were to the music corner as what are enclaves in department stores. What I, am I talking yeah, about? Yeah, I They were you. independent producers. Right, right. But it was interesting that here in Newton Corner you had the makings of you know, quite a popular music education if you cared to have it. Now, it was always busy. He always, always had demand. It just didn't pay, of course, because yeah. Jack wouldn't, <laughs> Jack wouldn't charge the guys enough rent. Right, right. <laughs> Not, and they didn't charge too much for their lessons, so it was working great, except it didn't make any money. Now, the rest of Newton Corner on that big, Oval block there. Mm. Was, was that packed with stores? 
I oh no, it was that. it was not really packed. You could there used to be an old wooden floor Woolworths next to the Paramount. Right. That's out on Washington Street. Right. That was the last wooden floor Woolworths I remember. Right, right there. Absolutely yeah. no longer any. Nope. No. <clears throat> that and the one in the behind. Yeah. Oh. Is are they wooden floor? And yes. there was a tailor next to George's bar, a very elderly gentleman whose whose nose bones were breaking through the skin, and he would stand and stare out the door and just break my heart. I would try so hard not to stare back. back. Okay. And then there was George's bar. Let's see. The, oh, there was Barnett's Fabrics. Barnett's Fabrics was there for years. Was there all the time we were there, and that was around the corner on Washington Street. And that golly, that must have been there for quite a few years. Oh yes, and then he moved further down Washington Street years later. But he was there a long time. No, <clears throat> and our side of the street was the very nicest post office we ever ever knew personally. Those guys were so dear. What was it called? Mm -hmm. Corner post, post office? Uh, no, Newton. This Newton. is the Newton. Yeah. Newton Corner is the old Newton. Mm -hmm. And you know, for the contrast with the guys who were sitting in front of George's bar and waiting to pick up, in this part of Newton also is Farlow Hill. It's hard to find people with bigger houses than up on Farlow Hill. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting uh, when you read about the old pre Turnpike, you know, how mm -hmm. this was even more bustling. But I mm -hmm. always thought of that block as the last vestige of, you know, the old Newton Corner. When you came to Newton Corner, you had several children already, mm -hmm. and they went through. We had a boy who was going into the sixth three, fifth grade at Cabot Elementary mm -hmm. School, and twins who were going into the uh, third. And uh, Amanda was an infant, and that's it for our kids. And Cabot Elementary School was the most wonderful elementary school, but at the time we were undergoing the uh, great school lunch fight. Did you know that in the elementary, what I couldn't bear about Newton, the first thing I couldn't stand was that the kids were never in the damn schools. Elementary schools, they came home for lunch Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and they had Tuesday and Thursday afternoon off. It was just a nightmare. This is the 60s. This oh. is 1964 through, I forget when, but uh, parents, when mamas were beginning to go back to work, right, right. I was the last mama on my block right. to stay home to work. Mm -hmm. And the other mamas often thought I had stayed home to take care of their kids, and it was very hard mm -hmm. to get it through their heads. That I you are on ro what road? Bellevue Street. Bellevue Street. Right. Near Newtonville Avenue. Yeah. And so um, the kids would go to school and take off their coats and have their juice and cookies and come home. It just was awful. So the mothers who were beginning to work began to raise hell about this. And, you know, at the time, the teachers and the kids all looked very hale and hearty, and the mm -hmm. parents all looked very mm -hmm. uh, miserable. Yeah. And uh, in contrast to Natick, from which we had moved when the kids disappeared at sunset, mm -hmm. sunrise and reappeared at sunset, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the parents all looked rested and the teachers looked sort of hassled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we were, and the parents began to fight. We, Cabot Elementary School, its very self, with its principal, whose name I think was Mrs. Thomas, made Time magazine. I saw an article in McCall's or the Ladies' Home Journal about this school fight saying that the teachers had the upper hand that they were saying parents who wanted children to eat lunch at school were anti-education. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Took years, years. I think this fight must have gone on for three or four years. Finally, we had to have school lunches, which of course the kids threw out, but at least they threw them out at school and they didn't ignore them at home. Right, right. So at <coughs> Cabot Elementary went up to uh, sixth at the time? Yes. And then where did the kids go? The kids went to Bigelow Junior High, which has since closed in. It had a principal named Mr. Frost. It had one teacher who taught music whose name was Miss Hubbard. Mm -hmm. And she personally was responsible for more Newton Corner kids taking instrumental lessons than any other human being in the mm -hmm. world because they had to sing to the class if they couldn't play a musical instrument. Great, great, <laughs> yeah, great. 
the thread of music run through. Yes. The vice principal yeah. at Bigelow Junior High was often seen to be marching up and down the hall saying, I hate kids. I hate them. I've got five at home. Enough already. I hate kids. And there was another who was, Newton Corner had some pretty tough kids from across the road. Kids who would come and steal things from the music corner. They were tough. And uh, one kid threatened, we had a, a lovely little man who was absolutely helpless teaching in a discipline, something like shop, but he knew nothing about it. He came over to get my husband to show him how to solder, mm -hmm. and he's teaching shop. But one little kid would put notes on his desk saying, we're watching you. <laughs> it was just, poor man. I cannot remember his name. Um, well, Bigelow Junior High was evidently very lively. Bigelow Junior High kids believed that they Junior High kids were spawned in hell and vice versa. It was a terrific rivalry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And later on, they all were in the Newton North sector? Mm -hmm. Or did they go off to separate high schools? They and Bigelow both went to Newton North, unless they went to some Catholic high school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And where did your children go? Our oldest went to Newton North. This was when it was still three buildings with the tunnels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we get down now into the 70s and the Kent State strike years. And my strong impression is that nobody was in charge in that school. The teachers being very bright. The kids were always striving to be further out than the teachers and they just couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, teachers were coming out of the closet and zipping their shirts down to their navels and wearing medallions. <laughs> and, God. and so one, our son, there are nine days of his senior year in high school that we will never be able to account for. Mm -hmm. He'll mm -hmm. never tell us. Even God forbid we should find out. Mm -hmm. but it was just awful. And the, the things that were going on in the tunnels kids wouldn't go down in the tunnels and uh, our eldest began to refuse to eat lunch in the cafeteria because this was the LSD time people were tripping in the cafeteria it mm -hmm. made him sick mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he was furious the day he missed the bomb they were always having bomb scares bombs were supposed to be popping off in lockers and he was sick one day and he missed it when the bomb really went off he never forgave himself <laughs> it was just awful so well, they, uh, the what? survivors, uh, they <laughs> graduated in which graduating class? class? Uh-oh, when did Georgia, yeah, so whenever Senator Kennedy was the, their class speaker. So I would be 72 or 72 probably. And uh, we could, uh, in those years, that in the earlier years, the grad, we, I never used to miss graduation at Berkeley College of Music because it was such Time. Yeah, those mm -hmm. guys would fall out forwards, backwards, and sideways. Mm -hmm. But by the time we get to the graduation of our eldest in, I guess, 72, ah, the kids at Berkeley was beginning to have very severe looking parchments of rolled and diplomas, and Newton North was slowly disintegrating. Mm -hmm. And we only could find Tracy because because he had to have half a credit. He had to sing in the chorus his senior year. Mm -hmm. So we knew to look in the chorus, right. and he told us the guy next to him would have a purple feather sticking out of his mortarboard. So we found Tracy. We could see him. This class was enormous. Newton North was enormous. Seven, eight hundred years? Oh, yes. It drew Newton North, unlike Newton South, when it finally opened. Newton North drew for its technical high school on a population line be somewhere between Newton and Worcester. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was enormous. <laughs> enormous. Yeah. Right, good. Um, now, your younger children, um, they you moved to another part of Newton? One of the reasons was I could not face Newton North, not mm -hmm. another minute. It was just too awful. So uh, we moved, and uh, they were bust. Kids in who li we moved to Wobbin and kids who live in Wobbin for some reason go to Newton South. Yeah. But wherever they go, they'd have to be bus. Wobbin's pretty far away from everything. Else. Yeah, yeah. So they had a very different time. Mm -hmm. And they were graduating class of what? What, 72 and 3? 75. 75. Yeah. 75. The twins were. 
Yeah, Amanda is another seven years later. But uh, that was a rather quiet school. Uh, Comparatively so. speaking, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Although some of the kids tried, mm -hmm. it was a different atmosphere. That's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. And the twins received such an education. Of course, they wanted one. Our eldest and our youngest weren't all that interested, mm -hmm. but the twins wanted one. The, the minute the twins went to college, mm -hmm. they were tutoring immediately. Mm -hmm. At Bigelow Junior High, they had found out what the structure of the English language is. Mm -hmm. They had a teacher who didn't need to be like. She needed to teach grammar. Mm -hmm. She insisted those damn kids learn grammar, and mm -hmm. they did. And they had a... And they were never allowed to forget it either. They had a string of good teachers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No one in the school system. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, well, that's why we moved to Newton was the school system. Oh, you could have a I forgot to. We could have moved on anywhere. And we moved, chose Newton for the school system. Well, he was teaching at Berkeley in town. Oh, it's not that that made any money. He made 2800 bucks a year. But still, that was the focus, right? And so you yeah. could have lived anywhere in the Boston area. Yeah. Consciously. Oh, and you had come from what? We come from Ohio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you zeroed mm -hmm. in on Newton as mm -hmm. having a reputation. It's mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. because we met people at the Ethics. Did you ever hear of the Ethical Society? Oh, yeah. yeah. We went down there, and uh, the best people we met lived in Newton, and they said, don't kid around, Brookline or Newton. And Brookline seemed smaller. Newton just seemed more capacious. So we found a house in Newton. That's interesting. Straight from Ohio and then zeroing in on mm -hmm. what is considered. Well, we had lived in Natick for a while. We were the only, there were only two non-Catholic families in an area of something like five blocks. Mm -hmm. And that was very hard because the kids all would lock into games at Saturday Sunday school mm -hmm. up at St. Linus. Mm -hmm. So it was hard on our kids. And mm -hmm. besides that, it was boring. Ah, oh, Newton had everything, right? Uh, now, the pike had already come through in Newton Corner mm -hmm. when you arrived in mm -hmm. the early 60s. But the hotel and the other buildings had not been built? No. And I would give lots to remember when on earth they were built. We used to just go across that bridge that's still there. Yeah. But now life is so complicated that after the air rights battle was fought and won. I think probably Star Market broke the ice down at Walnut Street. That was Walnut the first Washington. That was the first. First thing built. Uh, that's over. Yeah. And then and then the in the uh, Tracy was still our oldest was still in high school when the motel over the pike opened and I remember he had a friend who worked there who said it shook all the time. Oh dear. She was petrified. I think it was superstition. I don't think it shook all the time. She was just terrified. No, but I, in those years I would be taking our youngest for walks in a stroller and if you ever saw an interchange planned by a committee it's that interchange. There mm -hmm. is no making any sense of it at all Don't and I can remember trying to cross from our drugstore across from the library right. to the other side and asking a policeman who was standing there if he would help us. And he said no. <laughs> he couldn't imagine how to help us, I guess. <laughs> and this was uh, trying to get over the to Washington Street proper. Well, yes, you yeah. had to cross whatever the name is of the chute that comes around. What is the name of the chute that joins Center Street? I don't even know. It's just a little exit from the turnpike and it joins you to Center Street and you can then take a left over the bridge or go straight ahead and finally come out on Washington Street or Right, right, something. right. But it must just be called <coughs> exit until it If I know Newton, it's got a name. Yeah. I bet you. We could find it on a map, I bet. We could even ask our excellent reference department. My goodness, I'll have to find that out and see if that has mm -hmm. a plan. I'm not mm -hmm. my dad is with the other side. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's interesting being a walker. But oh. I, it must have been in, uh, to see how that whole layout is. But how long did they take to build the hotel? And you know, I didn't pay all that much attention. I just remember being. Mm, 
command it would have been a little d person in a stroller, our youngest, and then she was a person who kept climbing out of the stroller oh, yeah, by the time the time our eldest had a friend who worked in the motel. So a couple years. And then That's we crazy. all said that they would never be able to rent any space in that silly building. You know there's an office building next right, to it. Right. Finally a bank opened with an impossible parking lot shaped like an acrylic alphabet letter. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then the motel was going. And um, finally, I think some space rented out upstairs. Uh, but we all laughed merrily at that stupid building. All the while, the traffic was going through on the pike as the building was going on above it. How did they do that? Well, something similar to the Heinz Auditorium, a lot of terrific engineering. Nobody died. Um, I, then you moved in to Wabin in 72, mm -hmm. and uh, you get into certain types of activities there. Yeah. Somewhere around then, for some celebration, some city celebration, a commission formed. I, Judy Chalpin was one member, uh, and, was and they sponsored an enormous, it wasn't called anything yet, it was some sort of celebration, much like our tercentennial celebration. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Newton sponsored a crafts fair that was just splendid that first year. I think it must have been juried. There were splendid craftsmen. The fair was gorgeous. It ran out along the mall on Commonwealth Avenue, and they had it on in front of City Hall on the grounds. That the ladies strip, who yeah. formed that, you know, by the time you've done something like that, you've learned so much you can't bear to waste it. That's why these damn things never die. That's right. That's these right. people stayed together. And the um, mayor formed the Newton Cultural Affairs Commission, and we used to work out. His secretary used to do all our copying of minutes, right, right, and all this stuff. And uh, in those blissful first years when we ran Spring Fest, Newton, Linda Plout already ran the commission, and I was the secretary. And for years and years, I just minded Linda Plout. Finally, I got tired of it. Don't me that there was no law that said I had to mind Linda Plot anymore, and I didn't. But we ran, uh, we ran that fair for years and years. And I think I made a mistake. I kept thinking the better thing to do was get away from the mayor's office. I mean, who knew he was going to be mayor? Yeah, for longer than most trees will ever be alive. And so uh, I kept uh, making us more and more independent. And the year we became financially independent was the year of the rain gauge. My friend who was co-chairman that year met a lady from England and she said, oh, you should, and you should if the city won't give you a uh, rain date, which the city wouldn't because they swore the janitors wouldn't work any other weekend or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you should insure against rain with noise of London, you see. So my friend was thrilled. She called the British consulate and found out what you do. We insured with Lloyds of London for really not very much money. Right. But if it rained a quarter of an inch or more, we would receive a payment. So by golly, it was a cloudy Sunday, <laughs> and by golly, it rained, and our nice auxiliary policeman, Jay Moscow, gathered his cohorts about the great city rain gauge we'd bought and said if that wasn't a quarter of an inch, he wasn't an auxiliary policeman. <laughs> and, and my co-chairman sent the uh, agreement back to Lloyd's of London. It was a mess because she told them it was out in the rain. <laughs> So then after that, we were financially independent, and we uh, made a little money. So that went on for a while, and then after a few years, my husband, who was getting very tired of this, said, you know you work nine months of the year to make 600 bucks. This is silly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I quit doing that. But the spring fest goes on. Well, and mostly it's made up now, you think, of people all over Newton? Or they sort of craftsmen. Oh Robin no, 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 no! It's all over Newton. That was the first point, and and an ongoing point we were trying to draw on all of Newton. And the first few years, we tried to restrict the number of craftsmen mm -hmm. to Newton craftsmen, but that's not possible. Oh, you, get, you begin to now. attract. Right, right, oh, 
stop. Just drink. it's not that it's juried. No. I had to. I went on to run a uh, craft fair for a while at the Newton Art Center that was juried. The difference is. No, no. It, uh, for how long were you associated with the Newton Art Center? Newton Art Center. Oh my lord. Oh, I'm terrible at this. I hadn't even thought about it. years and years and years. We just. We just, I left the board when my husband uh, had been treasurer of the Newton Art Center for about a year because I thought, this is silly. Why sit two weavers in one meeting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. since both of us hate meetings? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, we also were active in the Friends of the Free Library and when we first moved to Newton, the first thing I did was call up a lady who knows everything and say and ask what you do if you want a new library because mm -hmm. anybody could see we needed a new main library. Oh, that was and she said you uh, you yeah. call up uh, Father Dryan's office. There are federal friends for new libraries, but you do that with the Friends of the Free Library, and I would bet you a great amount of money that the Friends will do nothing. Mm -hmm. And by George, it was true. You could not get the Friends interested even in calling Father Dryan's office. So between the time we finally got to our good library fight. And that earlier time, Framingham got two new library buildings. I was furious. 64 to the present. <clears throat> well, 64 to not quite the present, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. it got yeah. Well, and that many. was in his territory, you see. When people touch on um, their feelings about the library, uh, there's so many uh, things over the years. You know, oh, my. There's goodness. an appreciation for it, but then there's a. a uh, God for expense and what have Of course, of course. Well, now that we seem to be on the eve of moving mm -hmm. to a new library, mm -hmm. it, it's interesting that you've seen that over mm -hmm. the years. That's a long time. Mm 